Does that work? <laughs> That was pretty. <laughs> oh, it's cold though. It's a winter wonderland <laughs> inside is. the studio this morning. It is. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. Lisa Dillon Scott here on this Tuesday morning, the 20th of December. Mm -hmm. You need some mittens now. I do. It was cold. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good idea to like start off by showing off how fluffy the snow is. It is very fluffy. Yeah, it is. Uh, yesterday's snow was crazy fluffy. Like if you haven't been outside and just looked at it, everything's sparkly and shiny and it's a light fluffy Snow, that's really uh, allows temperatures to fall. This light, airy snow is perfect to get temperatures at 20 below. We're sitting at 20 below zero right now. That's not the wind chill, that is temperature. Two zero below zero. That's crazy. Yeah, it's cold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Um, yesterday, uh, we had that light, fluffy snow, 48 to one snow to water ratio. So that means one inch of liquid water would be 48 inches of snow. In comparison, our snow last week was six to one. So six inches of snow to one inch of liquid. So you can imagine, like, of course, last week's snow was super heavy. It, you know, it was really hard oh, to it shovel. Oh, hard on the back. Yes. Yeah. But this snow, you can almost go out there with a leaf blower and just get nice. it off your driveway. So completely different type of snow. Yeah. Good uh, and bad, though, because yes. this is the kind that you can really blow around. Yes. And uh, you know, ices up the roads, but also visibility is going to be horrible. Yep. We have some issues coming up in the next couple of days as well yeah. with the wind picking Wind's up. Wind's going to be picking up and this light, airy, fluffy snow, it's going to be blowing around like nothing. I mean, Oof. it's going to be bad. And of course, it also f makes the road slicker quicker because it's it's so fine, it's almost just like ice crystals. And of course, once it melts onto the ground by car tires and they refreeze with these temperatures at you know, well below zero, mm -hmm. it's roads have been terrible in town all week. I think we all can attest to that. They've just been bad. And yep. There's nothing crews can do when it's this cold. Usually when it's this cold, we don't see snow, but no. we had snow yesterday. Exactly. We have snow in tomorrow. the forecast for tomorrow. Yep, another you know three to six inches, <laughs> oh, and it's going to be more of this light and fluffy stuff. So And uh, right in time for holiday traveling. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, not great. <laughs> not great at all. Not great at all. Oh. All right. Thank you, Dylan. You're welcome. All right, Dylan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to remind you, of course, we do this Facebook Live every weekday morning between 8 and 8.30. You can watch <laughs> us anytime on your Facebook feed. You can also uh, follow us by uh, checking out our Inforum YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and of course, your favorite podcast platform, just go to inform.com slash podcast and you'll find the Inform Minute there. We're everywhere, yeah. really, and on air, oh yeah. Everywhere we want to be. All right, let's talk about some local headlines this morning. A scary incident over the weekend that happened in Pelican Rapids. A man fired multiple shots inside an apartment building there. Saturday morning this happened, police responded to the report of gunshots heard in that complex. Upon arriving, deputies noticed a bullet hole in the smell of burnt gunpowder. The man responsible, Jordan Pierce, interacted with police while in possession of a rifle before returning to his apartment. That's when everyone else inside the building was evacuated and Pierce then eventually surrendered to law enforcement. He was placed under arrest and faces multiple charges, including reckless discharge of a firearm and carrying a firearm while under the influence of alcohol. Okay, we want to know what color do you think they should paint the walls at the airport? <laughs> Maybe it's more in-depth than that. But you probably know that they're doing a major expansion renovation project at Hector mm -hmm. International Airport. And it's happening right now where the airport authority actually wants your feedback on some of, you know, kind of to guide them on some of the basic things sure. as far as what I'm understanding. They want feedback on things like assemblies, colors, concepts. Uh, they're doing an online visual preference study. Uh, this morning. It's going on online right now. You can find a link to that meeting. Once we're done, you don't want to watch anything else. <laughs> don't leave us early. <laughs> don't leave us. FargoAirport.com. It's a 30-minute session. It's going to feature some various informational images and materials, and then you get to vote. So mm -hmm. that's kind of fun. I kind of like it to design the, the new airport. Yeah. So it's check cooler, that out. Uh, giving people a chance to have their opinion heard. Exactly. All right. Right now, a historic theater in New Rockford, North Dakota, is looking for help after heavy snow that we've seen the last few days caused its roof to cave in. Wow. It happened Monday morning, hours before it was set to host a group of students. WDAY spoke with Sydney Carr, whose mom runs that theater. She tells us her mother found a hole in the roof of the 100-year-old auditorium around 8.30 that morning. And then about two hours later, the rest of the roof caved in. Nobody was hurt, thankfully, but the pressure from the collapse pushed one employee that was inside the building out into the street. So just that's imagine crazy. Like, that whole story is getting cra pushed yeah, out getting by pushed out. air and the pressure from it falling in. That's kind of crazy. I'm actually surprised we haven't heard about more of that happening too, because the snow was so heavy and wet mm -hmm. last week. It, it can happen, especially on those older buildings like that. Um, so the North Dakota Film Society has set up a GoFundMe page to help out with uh, you know damage costs and assessments and that kind of thing. 
So far, more than $4,600 have already been donated to the theater. You can find a link to donate on the New Rockford Theater's Facebook page if you wish to help. This is a big story coming out of Moorhead, and if you've ever tried to drive in Moorhead, you know that trains stop traffic all the time in Moorhead. Well, over $26 million in federal funds have now been awarded to the city of Moorhead for some railroad underpasses. The federal funds awarded to the project will be provided through the U.S. Department of Transportation's Rural Surface Transportation Grant Program. That's a mouthful there. Um, it's going to involve lowering 11th Street, though. 11th Street in downtown Moore, Moorhead. That'll allow the street to pass under two different sets of railroad tracks. Um, if you had to guess, how many trains do you think go through Moorhead? You know, because we talked about it earlier. Yeah. 70. It's a lot. 70 trains a every single day. So that's about five hours of uh, traffic disruption, which makes sense if you've ever yeah. <laughs> sat, you know, waiting for a train in Moorhead. It seems like it takes forever. Forever. Ever, anyway. It's crazy. So we'll see what happens with that, but uh, good stuff there. All right. Uh, some Another story that we talked about this morning that's getting some traction on social media, <laughs> kind of a talk of the town type of story. So uh, we watched the Bison game this weekend on Friday. They beat Incarnate Word. But the, the big story was afterwards when the lineman, um, Cody Mock, played a fiddle to celebrate the victory. Usually they're just <laughs> pretending yeah. to play a fiddle, like air fiddle. Mm -hmm. Is that a thing? Air fiddle? Yeah, but air he fiddle. had an actual fiddle. Yeah, a real fiddle. Um, you can watch that video online. It's pretty cool. It's pretty <laughs> fun. You can probably find it on Twitter or whatever, Facebook. But it turns out that fiddle was actually borrowed from a Moorhead Middle School. And then, get this, uh, some Moorhead Middle Schoolers wanted to make sure that Mock was ready for that big game, and so they gave him fiddle lessons. Well, if you're going to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. That's right. And yeah, I guess, <laughs> apparently, the, the gist is, what well, it was awesome when he's playing it, the kids said he was not holding it yeah, correctly. He, he didn't have the right, right form. Uh, so how cool, and how Sticklers. cool for them to, to get to have, yeah. you know, Mock come into the classroom. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, he went there and learned how to kind of, you know, more properly handle and play the fiddle. Now so. he's... Ready for Frisco, um, yeah, on and off the field, fiddle playing. Yeah, we'll see if he picks up a full-time new hobby. That'd be kind of fun. That would be awesome. All right, uh, let's talk national news. This is a breaking story into the newsroom this morning. An earthquake hit Northern California. The earthquake was a 6.4 magnitude, and it happened off the coast around 2.30 this morning in Humboldt County, which is about 7.5 miles from a town called Ferndale, California, and that is near the Redwood Forests up there in Northern California. There were several aftershocks afterwards, reaching a magnitude of 4.6 on the Richter scale. Um, right now, the, the good news, I guess, is there's no tsunami threat with the earthquake, but there are currently more than 50,000 people without power at the last time we checked. So certainly that's, something that's, that's impacting a, a lot of yeah. people. We're gonna continue to track that for you throughout the day here mm -hmm. on WDAY. Another big story today, lawmakers have, have unveiled a massive deal to avoid another government shutdown. The current spending bill sits at over $1.7 trillion and funds government operations across federal agencies for the 2023 fiscal year. Of course, this deal comes as a result of lengthy negotiations between Democrats and Republicans. The bill, uh, which contains over 4,000 pages of text, is expected to pass Thursday and then, of course, head to President Joe Biden's desk for his signature by Friday before the uh, government spending is set to expire. Yeah, big deal there. All right, Hot Mike is from 9 o'clock this morning until 11. Don Mizzo is going to be talking about all things sports-related. The road to, to Frisco is now Every day. in front of us. Yep, absolutely. Um, a lot of NFL football to talk about as well because the playoffs are just around the corner. Right, I didn't watch the game, but I, I'm a Rams fan, and the Rams lost to the Packers. They did. Last night. Super Bowl champions. Like, well, They've had a I... bad season. But uh, so Christian Watson, year. who we talked about a lot in recent weeks, he didn't really do a ton in that game comparatively to the other, yeah. the other games. If he doesn't get two or three <laughs> touchdowns per yeah, game, we're disappointed yeah, now. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> set a high standard at this point. So, exactly. But the Packers did win. Um, I'm sure that'll be something Dom talks about this morning. Um, Lisa, before we go, tell us about that deal we still you got going a on. a couple of days left. It goes until the 23rd. Uh, Black Friday expanded half off your annual subscription to inform.com, mm -hmm. the perfect gift for yourself or someone you love. <laughs> so we're on the countdown. If you've been procrastinating, this yeah. might be the, the perfect gift to uh, give this weekend. Yeah, get it done. All right, we're going to have updates on all those news stories throughout the day, including that California earthquake mm -hmm. and the government spending uh, bill. We have our newscasts again starting at 11, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And then we'll be back from 5 to 7 tomorrow morning with all the latest. We're going to be tracking... Um, more winter weather. Yeah. Stay warm <laughs> out there. It's cold. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.